I think this is going to be a bit of an adventure for both you and me, viewer. Welcome to South Korea. Now at this moment in time you'll find me wandering around the Olympic Park. Seoul hosted the Olympics in 1988 and it was a bit of a pivotal moment for the country. It was just emerging from some really difficult times following the massacre down in Gwangju and democracy was really something that was taking hold and was laying down roots and strong foundations in this country. But this is a beautiful path to wander around to explore some of the old venues of the Olympic Games in 1988. In fact, there's a K-pop concert happening here tonight I have to confess I don't know too much about K-pop at all and I'm definitely not here riding the K-wave. In fact, this is the very early days of my adventure here in Seoul and here in South Korea. I'm really, really looking forward to discovering more about this country and finding out what makes it so unique in this part of the world from its cuisine, its food, its natural environment and to the dynamic cities and the incredible nature. So why not take this adventure with me? It's autumn here in Korea. I don't think there could be a better time to be out in this place with the autumn colours in full force right across the trees and the plants. And it has that warmth still from the summer. Now Seoul is a bit of a monster of a city. It's absolutely huge. So green spaces like this become incredibly important to its citizens and to travellers like you and I who come here to visit. They're an incredible place to come and just be a bit more by yourself, have a bit of peace and quiet and take in some spectacular views like this one on, which includes South Korea's tallest tower. It's not too long before you're reminded that there is a big old city out there. Now the venues of Seoul's Olympic Park are used for a variety of different reasons these days uh, from training the great and good of the sports stars of this nation uh, used for regional competitions but also for concerts and events now like I said I'm not really into K-pop but I can't confess to know many artists from that scene but there is a concert going on here tonight and as I was coming here when I arrived they were doing sound checks for that concert so if you can see in the background maybe and you know who that group is, why not stick something down in the comment below and let me know and educate me. That would be great. Behind me is the Museum of Korea. Now it's a great place to come and check out if you want to find out a little bit more about the country that you're visiting, its heritage, its history, the things that make it tick, the things that have happened and where it's probably heading in the future too. It's free to enter. I'm really looking forward to finding out a little bit more too. Chun Hanok village is the largest collection of traditional Korean houses in Seoul. There's about 900 properties here and some of them have local arts and crafts. There are cafes and tea shops and even museums which you can check out too. It's worth remembering that this is a residential area so you really need to keep your voices down while you're here and also if you want it quite atmospheric it's best to come very late in the day or very early. Away from Bukchon Hanok village is this place, the Korean National Folk Museum. And this is a place you can come where you can find out a little bit more about how Koreans lived their lives through the ages, the kinds of jobs they did, what their homes were like, and their daily lives in general. Really interesting place, beautiful place to walk around. It's a little bit quiet too if you want to escape some of the crowds as well. Kwantang Market needs no introduction. You'll have seen it on Netflix. I'm sure you've also seen it on other YouTubers who've been in there and tried all the delicious food that's available in there. I'm absolutely starving. Let's dig in. So I've just come to a little bit of a quieter part of Guangzhou Market just to say that that was a really, really successful days of eating. So I had the uh, mung bean pancake, 5,001. I had banquet noodles, that was also 5,001. And kimbap for 3,001. And the prices around here, they're pretty much the same. Everybody's selling a similar sort of thing, but they're all selling them at the same price, which is really, really cool too. So it can help your budget. 
if you come around here then why not check it out and enjoy yourself in amongst the soaring skyscrapers of Seoul you'll find this place Jokyesa Buddhist temple going back several centuries and it also offers the temple state program which is really popular in Korea it's well worth heading over here and having a look before you head over to the royal palaces Gyeongbokgung Palace is one of the premier attractions here in Seoul. It's definitely worth checking it out. It has been restored and restructured, having undergone extensive damage over the ages, but it is now in its former glory, painstakingly reconstructed through various maps and diagrams that existed from previous ages. It's also worth heading out here to witness the changing of the guard. Now those happen at several times during the day by the main palace gate and also within the palace grounds. So it's well worth checking out the Korean tourist website to find out what times those happen. Gyeongbokgung Palace was the main residence in Seoul of the Chosun dynasty with its various grand pavilions and walls it's a very expansive space so you're going to need a fair bit of time to really do it justice there are also free guided tours in a range of languages including english spanish and of course korean it's a little bit quieter here over in the Tonggung and the Sochu Bank, which is the prince's residence and the royal kitchens. This is where the meals were prepared for the royal family, but also for banquets and state events as well. But the crown prince would also stay in this side of the complex too. This is a great time to actually point out that if you are dressed in traditional Korean clothing, hanbok, you get into places like this free of charge so if you're willing to dress up in those kind of costumes which look absolutely amazing i must admit then you can get into this palace for free Kangnam may be the epicenter of style and fashion and the high life here in seoul but in amongst all the malls and the high rises you'll find this place Pongguksa temple it's tranquil it's peaceful and there's a number of buildings part of the temple which you can explore pay your respects pray and be a little bit more mindful about your journey here in south korea they also run a temple stay program at this institution too here at bongoksa temple there's also a meditation trail which you can take it's about 850 meters long just for a little bit more quiet contemplation while you take in the surroundings and you also get some really cool views over the temple buildings and out over to the skyscrapers of gangnam as well Starfield Library goes to prove that there is more to Gangnam than just style. If you had a library like this back home, maybe you'd study a little bit harder too. From a temple of spirituality to a temple of consumerism, the Starfield Coex Mall is right across the road from the temple. Uh, it's on acid to be honest with you. There is so much consumerism going on in there that you really, really are going to be sport for choice if that's your thing. There's also an incredible library, which is one for the grammars, I think. I've just come out to this almost like an island here in Seoul on the Han River. I don't think it's actually really on any tourist radars. It seems to be the kind of place where a lot of business happens because some of the skyscrapers are staggering. They are really, really quite unique and just soar right into the sky. But I must admit that I'm the first foreigner that I've seen walking around these parts. It's a really nice place actually, to be honest with you, to get a little bit away from some of the usual things that you can do in Seoul. I mean, I'm just walking along this park now, which runs from north to south. It's really, really pretty. It's tranquil. There's a lot of local people maybe taking a break from businesses. But of course, as you will find in Seoul, there are lots and lots of cafes. Plenty on this little island too, to keep the business types fueled and wired for whatever they are doing. Also on this island is the National Assembly of Korea and the Memorial Hall. I wouldn't say that these are special reasons to come out to this place, but it is something different to do. It isn't obviously that packed with tourists and on the tourist trail. And it's a nice way to spend a couple of hours walking around, discovering a new area and what is an absolutely beautiful day here again in Seoul. 
Yonggui Forest Line Park connects fashionable Hongdai with the city centre. And basically what they've done here is that they've turned the old railway track of the same name into a forested park. It's really, really pretty, very popular with the locals just to come and have a little walk and chill out maybe on a lunch break. As you can see, a lot of people doing behind me. And from one park to another, and with a day as beautiful as this, it would be rude not to. There are other projects like this across the world. New York and Singapore come to mind. And it's just a great way to use up a space like a disused railway line, just to make it more vibrant and more usable and a nice space for people to be in. In fact, in some places, you can still even see the old railway tracks. I've had a little time to explore the local neighbourhood where I've been staying these past couple of weeks in Seoul. It's right by the metro station Nor Yangjin, uh, which is really, really convenient because it's on Line 1, which gets you into Seoul Station, Yongsan and City Hall, but also on Line 9, which will get you to the express bus station and also into Kangnam as well. And I've come to this beautiful little park as well, which is pretty historic. It has a tomb here. And actually this neighborhood is pretty vibrant. It's quite a young feel here too because there are a couple of university campuses. You see lots of students wandering around. There's loads of cafes, obviously, because this is Seoul. Of course, it's gonna be loads of cafes. There's also loads of restaurants and little bakeries and shops which you can kind of wander around in and around the alleyways. But the big surprise was that 1.2 kilometers away from where I'm staying in this neighborhood, there is a location from the movie Parasite Basically, it is the location for the pizza place that the family work at to earn a bit of money on the side while they're obviously building up to their big grand plan on how they're going to all get jobs in that rich family's place. If you haven't seen the movie, it is a great movie, well deserving of its Oscar, but I won't spoil the plot any more than what I've said now. You can also get views like this from Siok Jin Park and nearby is Nor Yang Jin Fish Market which is a hulking structure. Fish market with all the fresh seafood that come into Seoul and is sold in and around the markets and the other restaurants and fisheries in and around Seoul. But also you can eat there if you want to try some of the freshest seafood that comes into Seoul too and it's really close by. I've passed this park several times as I've been for my morning runs and it's really nice to have finally got the chance to check it out. This neighborhood is a bit of a hidden gem I must admit and I really do think I need to get back here to check out some of the night views over the Han River too. There are a few burial mounds here too. They are sacred so whatever you do whenever you encounter them in South Korea don't climb on them. If the fuzz are about you're gonna end up banged up in jail and that's probably not gonna be a happy experience that's for sure.